For the past six days, Caleb, Jenny and Julie have been seeing what it's like to survive on welfare. She's proven that it is possible to raise a family on welfare. She does it. But how sustainable is that? She's given over her life as well to care for, for the man that she loves, you know. That's a massive sacrifice. We need to fucking get you out of this situation and we need to make sure that Bubba is all right. But now it's time to try and get off welfare and into the workforce. Get off welfare and get into work. That is the best form of support any Australian government can provide to the Australian people. But first, you have to find a job. In southwest Sydney, Julie Goodwin is up and ready to head out looking for work. Women over the age of 50 fall into the hardest category for finding employment. Having a job is so much more than just putting food on the table. It's something to get out of bed for, something to look forward to, even something to complain about. And to not have that, that's not good. It's not good for anybody at all. In parts of Campbelltown, the unemployment rate is almost twice the national average. I haven't gone door knocking for a job since I was 14 years old, so I imagine that the that things have changed a little bit. My first job was a retail assistant in a Noni B store in Northgate, Hornsby. I just went from door to door asking for a job and um, I was 14 years and nine months. I think that was the, the legal date back then that you could go and get a job. So using the same approach, Julie decides to hit the pavement. The idea of just running up and cold calling a business and asking for work is um, a little bit nerve wracking. Certainly not seeing very many uh, position vacant signs on the windows. There's obviously no point in me walking into a hairdresser and asking for a job. Um, there are nail salons, I also am unqualified to do that. Good afternoon. I'm very well, thank you. I was wondering if you would have any positions vacant if I was looking for work. Not at the moment. Yeah, very family run at the moment. Okay, so it's family business. It. Are you family? Yeah, dad. Dad, son, and another brother. And, and another brother. Yeah, another okay. Brother's been working. <laughs> so I've got to bust into the family. That's it. That's it. Somehow. Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> Opposite us, the fruit shops are always looking for work. Oh, are they? Yeah. All right. Oh, you want a job? Yeah. Yeah. You working for? Not in a fruit shop, but I. No, but I'm looking for someone in experience with experience in this kind of... Shop and the Arabic stuff. In Arabic stuff as well, okay. Yeah. My oh. philosophy oh. Um, when I'm employing people has always been that you hire for That's attitude and you train um, for the job. But some businesses, they're on the ground running, they need people to be experienced. And the only way to get experience is to get experience. Hello there, I am well, thank you. How are you? Thank you. I was wondering if you would have any jobs available in your shop. No? Okay, so that's another family business. And he said, I'm sorry, that's who I'm taking care of. If you're on welfare, get a job. It, it sounds so straightforward. There's nothing straightforward about this. When uh, one does not have a bathroom mirror, or a sink for that matter, one does one's teeth brushing in the kitchen sink. In Surrey Hills, Caleb's been living in a squalid one-bedroom flat. Rent is $40 a day, so he needs to find work to cover that and all his other expenses. I suppose what I have to now do is uh, put myself in the shoes of someone who is on Job Seeker, who is coming from very little, um, and is trying to get out of the welfare system. For many Australians, moving off welfare and into work can mean having to work multiple low-paying jobs. Caleb's starting out with food delivery riding. Delivery driving is hardly the most glamorous job in the world. It's generally migrants who do this kind of work. I, I think most um, working to, to middle-class Australians would see food delivery or 
and cleaning is below them. Most food delivery drivers and riders in Australia work as contractors. They have no minimum wage, no sick pay and no work cover. In a six-week period at the end of 2020, five were killed while working on the streets of Sydney. To show Caleb the ropes, Muhammad will be his guide through the first few deliveries. Gentlemen. Uh, Caleb. How are you, Caleb? Nice Muhammad. to meet you, Muhammad. Yes. Muhammad has been working as a delivery rider for the past three years. What's it like? You have to be very patient all day on the road. <laughs> patient with cars or...? Um... Everything, everything. What's the money like? Depends. Depends on what time you are working and how many hours you are working. Uh, with Uber, it pays $4, uh, the, uh, which is the least. Delivery pays around 6 to 8 for that. Per delivery? Per delivery. 6 to $8. Dollars. If you were to work 20 hours a week, you would be able to earn around 150 to 200. I feel a bit trepidatious about doing the delivery, to be honest, at the moment. Show me how this stuff works. When you go online here, see? This kind of delivery is reasonably repetitious. You pick up food from one place and take it to another. I'm sorry, I you... Doing a job like this is... <laughs> Reasonably dangerous, I would have thought. I've got enough money to eat, but I haven't got enough money to cover anything else. So, uh, suck it up, princess. With a bike and a phone, anyone can start working as a food delivery rider, with no training and no special licence. I guess this is not my typical line of work. So I'm under no illusions about the fact that I'm probably not going to enjoy it. Thank you. So I've got to go that away. That way. That way? Yeah. But, you know, work is work, money is money. I go hungry if I don't get money. Oh, well, that's a good start. Sorry, this is my first Sorry. time. Ah. <laughs> first trip done. Well, I suppose I'm a bit exhilarated now that I've had to dice it with um, the Sydney traffic on a bike. Um, so I'm sort of on the go a bit. Um, but but I'm, I'm otherwise OK. There's no fucking dry gullies on these roads, I'll tell you what. Fucking wet with traffic. Oh. For a delivery rider to get close to Australia's minimum wage of just over $20 an hour, they'll need to complete multiple jobs each hour. Hand it over or just leave it here? Uh, you can leave it there. No worries, thank you very much. That trip was worth $8.11 to me, so I am now sitting at $15.96 worth of earnings for um, about an hour's work. Look, my first impression, I feel pretty vulnerable on the road. But I'm very stressed. Thank you very much. See ya. Thanks for waiting. I am uh, on edge. I'm on edge. Four hours into his shift, and Caleb has made six deliveries. Just hit $30.33 in earnings. Can't have wait. Oh, I'm here in one piece. <laughs> oh, man. My heart is uh, <laughs> going. Oh. It's hard, it's hard work. Like, fuck. It's icing in and out of traffic and like I'm cooked, cooked. I'm mentally exhausted as well as physically. Adrenaline keeps you going, but it's pretty exhausting. In the Illawarra, south of Sydney, Jenny has been trying to live on the job seeker allowance for the past six days. 
few dead cockroaches in the front room. Now she's going to try to get off welfare and into a paying job. But currently, she's having trouble just feeding herself. I've got one banana that is looking a bit worse for wear, but should be all right in the fridge. But I actually have white bread and I have the leftover chocolate, so I've decided I'm going to um, eat bread and chocolate and banana for breakfast. And then I've got baked beans for dinner if I get no money and pizza shapes for lunch. When living on welfare or a low income, even simple tasks like washing and drying clothes becomes difficult. Checked out the laundry last night and <laughs> it's not, it's just a laundry trough, there's no washing machine. So I rinsed some stuff out in the kitchen sink. They're still not dry. Do I want to go to the laundromat and spend that money on washing my clothes? Alternatively, I could just wear some crusty clothes, be a bit stinky and deal with it. Nah, so it says a uh, wash, dry and fold. Surely that's not right. Per load is 22 bucks. And then it says a half a load, which is what I have because I don't have lots of clothes with me. 15 bucks. Even the drying is 13 bucks, I think, which is more than what I've got for each day when I've got money. I've got no money, so I'm going to walk down the street and see what it's like to actually go job hunting to see if I can get any casual work to get a bit of cash. Jenny's targeting the businesses on the main street of Port Kembla. I can use a coffee machine. I haven't done retail, but I reckon, um, yeah, if someone showed me how to use the machine, I would probably be all right. If cash is this tight, I'm pretty much happy to do anything. Job Seeker is meant to help support people finding work. But getting by on the amount is a challenge in itself, let alone the stress of looking for a job. Jenny's about to learn firsthand how hard it is. We all know that when you're looking for work, it's not easy. You need to be able to get to and from interviews. You need to be able to have access to a computer or internet to be able to apply for jobs. You need to be able to have decent clothes so that you can actually rock up to a job interview if you get one. Now, a lot of people that are in these scenarios that are looking for work don't have any of those supports or any of those things. And by keeping those people in poverty while they're trying to look for work so that they are unable to attain any of those things or get that support is hugely problematic. Hello. Hi, how are you going? Hey, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, my name's Jenny. I actually am just wondering if you guys have got any casual work going at the moment. Come from like hostel or? Uh, yeah, like a long time ago, but I certainly, I can use a coffee machine and make coffees. Yep. And I've done like, worked in lots of restaurants and bars and stuff. Any food um, experience? No, I don't have food prep experience, okay. no. So, um, at this stage where you're looking for um, like food cooks, chefs. All right, I appreciate nice your help. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks have a lot. Day. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> I've certainly, um, gone into places in the past when I first moved to Sydney and had to just go cold into cafes and shops to ask if they've got any work. So I've, I've done that before, but I haven't done it in a very long time. And you forget how uncomfortable you feel and how demoralising you feel. Hello. Hi. Good, how are you? Well. Yeah, it feels uncomfortable to just get rejected. You want to say, oh, but what if I just did this or what if I just did that? But, you know, it takes a lot of courage to do that. You. Appreciate your help. Cheers. See ya. Bye-bye. After an unsuccessful morning, the last shop open is The Florist, owned and operated by Renee. And so, so we don't have the work and we don't have the money and there's not the government funding to be able to allow us to employ anybody. Yes. We've got an apprentice and that's, yeah. that's all we can afford to have at this yeah. point in time. Yeah. I'll leave you. I don't want to interrupt your business. You've that's got right. important this work to do. This is Pete. This is my apprentice. Oh, hello, hello. Pete. How are you? Lovely to meet you. I'm so Jenny. How are you doing? Pete worked his whole adult <laughs> life, but when COVID hit, he lost his job and was forced to retrain. A 55-year-old male. Yeah. Um, I have three trades. Yeah. And I couldn't get a cash job now. I, I'm a chef by trade. Yeah. That is one of the best industries to yeah. have cash. So, yeah, this is what I was trying to rely on, because I can make coffee, but you no reckon that's like... at all. Australians over 50 will spend twice as long looking for work than younger Australians. 
I've heard people say that before, just get off your ass and get a job. And 20 years ago, that was the case. It was perfectly fine. You could go to Woolies, you could go to Coles, you could get a job working night fill, not a problem in the world. You try and get that now, it's, it's, it's impossible. Those jobs, they're gone, or they're given to the young kids now. Because of our age bracket, we are so unemployable. Yeah. yeah. The government wants to give everyone else a, yeah. a hand up. I've got to prove yeah. that I'm valuable. Yeah, yeah. That sucks. Totally, yeah. totally. Having reinvented himself as a florist, Pete now considers himself one of the lucky ones. I feel amazing. I feel proud. But where, where we work, there's a, <coughs> a man's hostel upstairs. And I see these blokes, I thought, shit, you don't want to be lonely and old and have addictions and everything like that. I think, how did I get lucky? It's, I feel humble. That's tough. That's tough. Because the whole model is set up that it's like you work and you get a job and then you earn your money and then you're not in poverty anymore. Well, that is not how it's working. That's broken. One quarter of Australians under the age of 30 need to work multiple jobs just to survive. After high school, Caleb moved straight into a cadetship and then a job as a journalist. So he's never had to work multiple jobs. Growing up was, was pretty normal. Parents went to work, Dad was a gardener, Mum worked in retail. We, we never struggled um, and that was you know, something I'm very grateful for, obviously. On his second day of working for low pay, Reality is hitting home. Well, I mean, having done the, the Deliveroo stuff last night, it's pretty lowly paid. They're, they're not uh, meeting minimum wage, basically. $26.30 after paying my rent. I think my quality of life is better working. You know, once I've paid for my rent, I had in my hand yesterday more than double what I had the day before. Before Caleb heads back out for the dinner shift on the bike, he's found a second job as a cleaner. I don't think it's unfair to expect people to, to make their own way or, or to, to at least put in some effort. You know, not, not everyone is going to succeed. It's, that is a fact of life. But. The effort is the main thing, I think. His cleaning partner for the day and fellow contractor is Jorge. Do you want me to sit in the front or the back? Yeah, sit up here. 38 year old Jorge is trying to get off JobSeeker after losing his job at the height of the pandemic. What did you um, do for work previously? So I was a car detailer for uh, Toyota. Yep. And so I got redundant, about five of us or so got redundant from there. Um, it was a shock. Yeah, this is uh, my mum's car. But after I got redundant and all that stuff, um, I had to sell it, pay rent. Jorge and Caleb only have two hours to clean a four bedroom house from top to bottom. The dust all up there, take all that off. Yeah. All this bench stuff needs to be done. Toilet, you need to get right in the back there. Rubbish needs to be emptied here. Skirting boards along the stairs, mirrors, nice and clean. It's about 10, 15 minutes maximum on each room. Two hours isn't much. For completing the job, they'll receive $42 each. OK, let's get stuck into it. Glove up, let's go. Time is money. To be competitive and cost effective, Caleb and Jorge need to work at breakneck speeds. <clears throat> you finished there yet? No. You've got to achieve a lot in, in two hours. Little spots. And it's a lot of pressure, because you're only getting paid for that two hours. There's no overtime. Okay. Well done? Yep. All right, guess you come in here. So all these need to come off, wash them up. Yep. All right in the corner, see in there. So not only you got to be quick, but you got to be, it's got to be done, done right as well. If you miss a couple of parts, you won't get the job back. Every job is important. I suppose the sustainability of this kind of work 
really depends on your fortitude. So when you need to finish up in here, we've spent too much time? A lot of people would struggle with it and a lot of people would probably weirdly thrive off it. I'll get you to start on this toilet. Yep. So get the brush, get on the insides. But it would obviously right. grind you down if you, you were working for $21 an hour, day in, day out. In Port Kembla, Jenny has spent the morning door knocking businesses, looking for work. A piece of white bread and a couple of pieces of chocolate for breakfast. I've got some leftover sausages from last night, so maybe I could eat that. But yeah, it's not looking pretty good. After scouring the local area, Jenny's managed to get a trial shift at a caravan park as a kitchen hand with Chef John. Hello, how are you going? I'm Jenny. Oh, sorry, I'm Nick. No problems, Nick. I won't distract you. You're, uh, you're in the middle of a thing. Those people out there look hungry. The average wage for a kitchen hand is $19.54 an hour. And this is the kitchen? This is the kitchen. John only works two shifts a week, earning him $375, which is not much more than he'd receive on JobSeeker. I'll prep if I've got time during the day. Yeah, yeah. But if I don't have time, I can't. Yeah. If I do what I can do. Yeah. Not being able to secure enough work hours means many Australians feel like they're better off on welfare. You're responsible for doing all the ordering or someone else is doing that? Uh, somebody else does the ordering, yeah. I just let them know that what we needed. Do you want, are you worried about my hair or you're right? Okay. No, good. Okay. There, there. Uh -huh. Thank you. So two cups of self-raising flour from this yeah. bucket into this bowl. Yeah. Through the sieve. Yeah. About a quarter of one of sugar and that'll make the dry mix yeah, for our yeah. pancakes. That's good. Yeah. I'm just going to make a whirl in the centre. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think I was that hungry, and I didn't think I was that craving of some quality food, but now I'm standing in the kitchen, so I am feeling very hungry. Yep, now we just give it a good whisk. Good. You know, there might be stresses about my current job, but there's certainly, certainly stresses about having to serve customers. Two big breakfasts. You've got a smashed avo as well. Are you on that? No, I'm on that. There's no more hash browns. That is a good bacon and egg roll. My biggest worry is getting through life week to week and knowing that I've done my best, but I've got to you know, always come up with that extra money. After falling on hard times, the park was more than just a workplace for John and his daughter, Isabel. Yeah, we ended up living here for eight months yeah. in a caravan. Um, we're paying $200 a week, yeah. which is very good. Yeah, yeah. She was going to school every day from here? She was, but you have to get up and you have to keep going. Yeah. You can't let that get you down. It's only temporary, and at the end of the day, it m might have been eight months, Yeah. but eight months in a caravan park to eight months on the street, yeah. no totally. comparison. John's combined work and welfare payments total $46 a day after rent. That's for him and his daughter to live on. For the family tax benefit A and B that I get, yeah. $300 a fortnight yeah. to raise a kid yeah. with food, clothing, all that kind of stuff, yeah. just isn't viable. Being a single parent on a limited income means simple things like school uniforms stretch the budget. So Isabel's uniform was 129 just for the one she had on today. Yeah. That's one uniform. She needs th at least three in total. Totally. And yeah, it's just, I don't have the money. She needs a laptop, can't afford that. So the school does, does supply and let them use theirs. But when she gets homework for home, she can't do it. And so what does that mean in terms of her studies? She's at a setback already before she's even started even high started. school. Yep. It makes me angry and annoyed, but what can I do, to be honest? Like, I've just got to look at it as, well, something that I've got to work towards. Yeah. So if I can pick up an extra hour at work or yeah. something. Yeah. I'm in the situation. At the end of the day, I've got to get myself out of the situation yeah. as best I can. I give up everything, anything and everything I can for Isabel to give Isabel what she needs. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard, hard, but 
we can only do what we can do in life. Yeah. Australian children living in poverty are three times more likely to suffer adult poverty. I obviously care about how John's going, but I really, I really worry about Isabel. She is basically suffering discrimination because of the income status of her family. She wanted she want to be a, a vet. Amazing. But as I said to her, to be a vet, you got to go to university. Totally. I don't want to be a vet anymore. I think she'd be better off with um, childcare. It would be easier for her in the long run. He's contributing, he wants to be working, but he's still not earning enough to be able to get by. He's saying that if there was something in the order of 50 bucks extra, that would make the difference for him to be able to save some money. There are over two million small businesses operating in Australia. But with one in three failing in their first year, being a business owner can leave you living on the breadline. Julie owns and runs a cooking school, so understands the stress of running a small business. I know that rush that you get when you've created a space that's beautiful and where people love to come. I know how uplifting it is. Into day two on the job hunt, she's decided to try and use her cooking skills and target cafes. Hello. Yeah, Hi, I'm, I'm Julie. Hoping to find a position vacant, Julie comes across cafe owner Sonia. So this is your cafe? Yeah. Yeah. We don't own the building, but everything else, yeah. yeah. In 2019, Sonia won Campbelltown Business Person of the Year. I took over 1st of July 2016 so, from the yeah. original owner. She did a great job setting it up. But yeah, it's beautiful. We, yeah, we took it to a whole, whole other level. In 2020, the COVID pandemic hit and forced cafes and restaurants to close and only provide takeaway meals. I closed down two days before the government said that there was, that there, we were only allowed to do takeaway. Um, I, sorry. Don't, don't apologise, mate. Um, my break even point was $750 a day, yeah. which is massive. Yeah. And I locked the doors, like we closed early. I closed at about 11 o'clock on the Wednesday because I just couldn't be in here with no people around. Everybody had already started working from home. Yep. Just gone and overnight, gone. yep. The, the walls were all done, like this was all decorated for yeah. me. And that's one of the the loss of income isn't the only issue for Sonia. She also has an outstanding $100,000 business loan. So you can imagine the tables just oh. set up through here with the, and then out the front, we had the full use of the courtyard here. Oh. So. The idea of opening again is too much for Sonia. So she now works four jobs, which barely covers her business loan, rent and living costs. I work during the day for um, Pheasant's Nest Produce. So okay. I deliver fruit and veggies with them. Yep. Um, I work night times at Club Menangle. I'm a chef out there on the Saturday night. Okay. Um, I work at the beer shed whenever um, they've got big events on. Is this seven day a week style stuff we're talking about? I work eight, eight days a week. Eight days yeah, a week. Yeah, 30 hours a day. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and how does that see you once you've, you know, made your debt payments? I'm not saving. I'm never yeah, going to be right. out of debt for, you know, the lease, the loan on this place, the business has got 25 years to go on it. So, Ever any thought about um, filing for bankruptcy? Mm, every day. Yeah. Every day. That I wish I could just walk away, but the loan's secure against my dad's house as well, so oh. it, it doesn't right. it doesn't help. I can't walk away. I can I can go bankrupt, but it'll only be for the rent. Sonia put her heart and soul and uh, into this cafe, and it didn't pay off. This. Literally, if I couldn't have drawn some money off my mortgage to take advantage of that JobKeeper scheme, this would be my story. I still have a fit-out loan that I would have to somehow service if I had shut my doors. I believe you when you say <laughs> that this isn't it and that you're going to have another go at this somewhere down the track. 
eventually. We'll be here. I can feel the, the dream that she had. I can feel the excitement that she had setting this place up. Her heartbreak is so palpable. In Sydney, Caleb is working multiple jobs to try to earn enough money to live. He's uncertain what he'll make later on with Deliveroo, so he's counting on the $42 from his cleaning shift. You asked me before, is this worth it? Not much of a choice, is there? It's worth it in so far as it means you've got money, but it's not like it's a, a stellar option, is it? No. Jorge has three children. After losing his job during COVID, he started working as a cleaner. This was the only job I could find. So no, I've got no choice. How does that feel? Trying to be the man of the house. You're not much of a man anymore. Doesn't make you feel like a man. But it's not just about you know, feeling like a man. It's taking your wallet out to buy something for the kids. Dad, I want ice cream. Sorry. Makes you feel bad. Jorge and Caleb won't get paid any overtime, so they'll need to finish the job in two hours or they'll be working for free. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm pretty tired. Yeah? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stressed, I think, more than anything Stressed? Else. Yeah. Feeling a bit hot? Yeah. Sweaty? Yeah. Well, well, not even halfway there. He does this on a daily basis. So, you know, if I were doing this all the time, I would be pretty fucking stressed. Having to work multiple jobs just to get by might not be as simple as Caleb first thought. Certainly not worth the money at the moment. And I don't think I could sustainably do it on a regular basis. I feel close to crying, but I'm trying my best. Hey, Gunda. Not as fast as I would like. Man, I don't know how you do this. Caleb and Jorge managed to finish the job in just over two hours. It's not easy, is it? <laughs> you think people think cleaning is just cleaning, but it's hard work. We're sweating our bums off you. How long do you reckon you can keep doing this for? Well, I'm not on the streets yet. <laughs> so if I can just manage to pay the bills, um, my rent, you know, chip in for the shopping and petrol on the cart so I can get to another job. Yeah. You know, anything less than this. If I didn't have this job cleaning houses, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. I, w I wouldn't know. I couldn't tell you. You'd be in trouble. I'd be in big trouble. I would feel, um, I suppose, halfway useless if, if uh, cleaning was the only option I had for work. Alrighty. So that's yours. Oh, you kind of deserved it. Thank you. It's not much, but hey, it's something. It is what it is. Yeah. Experiencing for himself what Jorge has to do to get by, Caleb has plenty to think about. Happiness and acceptance are two different things. I can accept that Jorge is in the position he is in. It doesn't mean I'm happy about that. Would I like to change that? Of course I'd like to change that. But how do you feasibly change it? You know, it's, it's at some point you've got to think about practicalities. On a peripheral level, you can understand that, and hence why some people would prefer to take the welfare option. But fuck, what, what are you achieving by sitting around on welfare? Over three days on the job hunt, Julie's only managed to score two low-paying shifts. One letterboxing pamphlets, and another as hired help delivering furniture. It's just hard, this, this is a long day. She decides to call it a day and head back to her emergency accommodation. Uh, today's been quite sad. <laughs> There's definitely a lack of opportunities. What it's taking away from people is the opportunity to, to do more, to be more, 
to have a quality of life that many of us enjoy. It's her last night and Julie makes do with what food she has left over. This is dinner number three out of the barbecued chicken with some rice and I'm running very low on greens. The idea of one barbie chook lasting for three nights is foreign. Maybe some rice for breakfast. If you're factoring in rent, cars, tolls, clothing, all the things that you need in a household, there is absolutely no way, no way on earth that that money covers it. The struggle for the people she's met has made a lasting impact. I thought I had plenty of understanding, but I, I guess I just didn't. I, di I didn't. And I'm, I'm grateful to every person who let me into their lives, told me their stories, were really open. I think there's motivation to get off Job Seeker, even if you've got to work seven days a week to do it. I know that when I was cleaning houses, waitressing, taking in ironing, singing at weddings, clowning at kids' parties, I was working seven days a week and that was not my life goal. I just had to keep going until I reached a point and my family reached a point where I could back off that a little bit, you know. Yeah, no, nobody's sitting around going, Woohoo! Job seeker, I have made it. It's not happening. In Port Kembla, Jenny has been seeing firsthand the challenges of trying to live on low wages with few hours. Jenny is down to the last of the food she managed to put aside earlier in the week. If I was in this situation and I had no prospect of getting out of it, I'd be I'd be really stressing at this point. The steel works in Port Kembla once employed 22,000 workers. That workforce is now just 4,500. It's left locals out of work and having to rely on charity to get by. You can apparently go here and get a meal. Um, so I thought that that would be a good thing to check out. Hello, hello. Hey, I'm Jenny. How are you going? Hey, Jenny. Nice to meet you. Hey. Emmanuel. Hi, Emmanuel. Lovely to meet you. Nice Hi, George. Jenny. Yeah, hey, George. You? Really good to meet you. How are you doing? Good, thank you. good. good. Um, I heard you guys give people food on a Friday night. Is that right? Every Friday, um, we usually open this facility for people to come and see it. Yeah. Have some social interaction. Great. Have some free dinner. We have to cater and we have to guess how many people are going to show. Yeah. So, but usually we have enough food. We've never run out of food. Yeah. Jenny's decided to volunteer for a shift serving other patrons. Yeah, because if there's no something like this, people will struggle yeah. a bit more. Because yeah. whenever people come here, they save something for tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, so, yeah, I don't think what people get from the government is really enough. I, I come from a refugee background. Yeah. I came here as a refugee and I was on Centrelink for a long time. Yes. And uh, yeah, you get $550 per fortnight. Yeah. You have to pay your rent, your bills and everything. Yeah. And yeah. Just like, you're like, when am I going to get out of this? Amazing. Bananas, peaches, pears, mangoes. Port is a place where mostly broken people live. The current rate of unemployment benefit is, is too low to have any sort of life. Um, my, I have one boy that's still at high school and it's fairly costly to keep him at high school. And, and, and the rents are so expensive, like my rental uh, takes nearly all of my money. Um, now bread, rolls. Um... Probably say, "Oh, go and get a job," but there's, the jobs just aren't down down here this way uh, in the Illawarra. So you've really got no choice but to, you know, uh, have 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 uh, unemployment benefit as your only source of income. Yeah, I'll have some nectarines if yeah, you yeah. have any. 
There's a couple of nectarines there. People that are work and think that there's jobs like it might be like the 70s or 80s where there's a lot of jobs, but that's not the case now. There's, you know, there's just not enough jobs. Having people in the community uh, coming here to help out and volunteer, and, and having other organisations getting on board by giving us what we need to be able to support the people is, is so fulfilling. We appreciate you coming Thank you. and seeing what we do. And we know that you've survived all day on a banana. Yeah. Today, so yeah. it's, our, it's our pleasure to give you a free meal. Amazing, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> These kind of, you know, community initiatives, it's actually the only option for people to eat but also to interact. Now that I've had these experiences and met these people, I do get what's needed. And it's not some theoretical radical lefty concept, it's basics and food. As Jenny settles in for her final night, the reality of trying to get off welfare and into the workforce is all too apparent. It's been a big week. It's been a really tough week. Um, I wouldn't want to have to live on Centrelink payments. And I cannot wait to see my family and not sleep in a crusty, <laughs> crusty, stuffy unit in a sleeping bag. Jenny, Julie and Caleb's exploration into Australia's welfare system is nearing the end. The gig economy has provided some much needed income for Caleb, as he sees how challenging it can be to get off welfare and into a job where he earns enough to live. This morning I, I did my cleaning shift, for which I earned $42. So that's rent covered for the day, plus two bucks. So I've, I've treated myself to half a chook for five bucks, which I have demolished. Probably one of the best feeds I've had all week, to be honest. But the money he's earned is barely enough to survive. So he's hitting the streets one more time. The most uncomfortable thing about this position is that you don't really know what's on the horizon. Something might happen, I don't know. And if you don't have money there to pay for it, well then what do you do? But what, what sort of position are you in? I've got about um, 45 minutes or so until my next shift, which is uh, food delivery, like I did yesterday. My aim for tonight would be to make enough money to uh, get myself a counter meal and a pint. That, that'd, be, that'd be really nice. Caleb's logged on for the afternoon shift back in Newtown, in peak hour traffic. Not far at all. So um, we're on our way. I didn't feel so safe yesterday. And when you're dicing in and out of traffic, trying to get somewhere as quickly as you can to make your delivery, like it, it um, can be pretty daunting. You're constantly, is there a car there? Is there a car there? Is there a car there? Is that going to guy open his car door on me? Like, it's a constant barrage of things you, you're thinking about, as well as the destination you're going to and getting the food there safe. Stephanie? Good, yourself? That's the idea. Thank you. You too. We're off the Bangkok bikes now. For three days, Caleb's worked to earn just enough money to live. He's made more money than he'd receive on JobSeeker. But he's realised it's not a great long-term option. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. See ya. This kind of job would probably help you get off welfare, but it's not the kind of job that is going to keep you off welfare. There you go. Have a good night. You too. See ya. Thank you. Enjoy. There you go, you've got some hungry mouths to feed by the looks of it. Thank you very much. So we're uh, now up to 48 bucks, which I must say I'm pretty pleased with. Seven o'clock, I've been out there for probably an hour and 45 minutes, and I've made nearly 50 bucks, so I am um, feeling pretty good about myself at the minute. So. I think I might call it a day. To end his nine-day experience on the breadline, 
Caleb's treating himself to a meal and a drink at the local pub. I'll grab the um, fish and chips, thanks. It's making Caleb reflect on what he's learnt. It's not an answer to your joblessness. It's better than being on welfare, but it, I'd, I'd be wanting to get out of it pretty quickly. A little luxury every now and again just sort of gives you a bit of a lift. Um, a sense that there is still hope. For nine days, Caleb's belief that the best form of welfare is a job has been challenged. In very simple terms, the solution to welfare is to get a job. But the extension of that question is how easy is it to get a job? And for some people it's very easy to get a job because they have a skill set that will allow them to find a job easily. And for other people, they're competing in a crowded market. And it's not so easy for those people to get a job. And so I suppose to, to say to them, well, just get a job is unfair. A lot of people, I'm sure, are trying very hard to get a job and just aren't turning one up. And so I can understand why they would, would turn to something like this. Because it's income. It's some income. It's, it's better than having nothing. But, it's, but it's, you know, it's not as simple as just get a job. I enjoy a good pub feed. But I never thought I'd enjoy a pub feed this much. Oh. <clears throat> it's been a bit of a culture shock, I think. Could you survive on the breadline? It's a question that's led Jenny Leong, Julie Goodwin and Caleb Bond on a journey. I would imagine for, for lots of people, seeing this will be a shock because they assume that if you get government support, that's going to support you. But when you're trying to survive on the breadline, you feel like you're excluded. You feel like you're separate from everyone and you don't belong. And I just done $300 shop yesterday. Yeah. And we broke. This experience has certainly broadened my mind. That range between have and have not is outrageous. They feel like they failed. You know, and I was like, you haven't failed, you haven't got a job. Yeah. And it was out of their control. Feels like the more time we spend in the house, the sicker we get. I don't know how many politicians have met how many people living in public housing. Like, the state is a fucking bad landlord. The system is broken. It doesn't work properly. You're not much of a man anymore. Doesn't make you feel like a man. I would like to think that we would have a nation where people who wanted to have a go at, at climbing up that ladder could Give it a bloody good shot. Good morning, Ron. I've got a bit of egg for you first. Right on the bottom bit. So giving people a little bit more money doesn't mean they're going to be laughing harder at the establishment. That's not what it means. What it means is that you're giving them an opportunity to get out from under that financial stress, to maybe have an outfit that they can wear to job interviews, to maybe look at doing that tertiary qualification. Come on. Come on. If, if there was one thing I could do to improve the lot of the people I have met through this journey, it would be to give them somewhere decent to live. It's not a massive ask. It's really not a massive ask. 